Hi, I'm Arnel Ganal of Point Loma Nazarene University and welcome to my talk on the multi-components of induced power generation during pitching in collegiate baseball players. I want to first acknowledge my co-authors Kristen Nicholson of Wake Forest University and Gordy Alderink of Grand Valley State University. Uh, so this was a, a retrospective analysis on data that was collected on 17 collegiate players that came into the Wake Forest Pitching Lab. Uh, we had full body kinematics and kinetics using a 12 camera motion capture system and an instrumented mound here which is the what's called the perfect mounds so it's a regulation pro mound with three amti force platforms in, that's embedded to the mound that allows us obviously to measure ground reaction force so we took all that data and then um, input that into what's known as an induced acceleration slash power analysis. And what that allows us to do is decompose the components of segmental motion that directly contribute to the acceleration and subsequently the power generation or absorb uh, at the throwing arm during baseball pitching. Now, this is not something new. This has been done before. In fact, I've cited some references here that in, in some form utilize an induced acceleration slash induced power. What's unique about this particular analysis is that this is the, the first time we were able to do that on a full body scale using, um, because before the GRF data wasn't available. So using that induced acceleration analysis, we can then break down or decompose those components that directly contribute to the acceleration of the throwing arm here. So you can see here I have displayed for one represented pitch induced acceleration of the throwing arm uh, throughout the, uh, the pitching motion. I've got the curves for the lower extremity, the waist, which is really the, the pelvis, uh, as well as the elbow. And I started with these three just to, to illustrate how little contribution these components have to the acceleration induced at the throwing arm. And then you look at the shoulder as expected, the, so that means the shoulder torque directly contributes to acceleration of the throwing arm, as you can expect, and the velocity dependent torque. The velocity dependent torque is the culmination of the centripetal and coriolis effects of segmental motion that happens throughout the kinetic chain. So if the pelvis rotates and the trunk rotates, um, its acceleration and subsequent its power that is generated or absorbed or generated or absorbed at the, the throwing arm is manifested through this velocity dependent torque and we found that the overall energy of the throwing arm the largest contribution was made by that velocity dependent torque is sometimes known as the motion dependent effects so if you think about baseball pitching it's it's an open kinetic chain it acts much like a whip so the torques that are uh, generated earlier in the kinetic chain with the pelvis and trunk are manifested through this velocity dependent torque and in fact you there are some uh, analysis some studies that you that decompose the velocity in the dependent torque and they found that yes that the pelvis and the trunk um, contribute or make up the largest proportion of the velocity dependent torque and uh, that ultimately would accelerate the throwing arm so its contribution although it may not be direct in terms of the pelvis and trunk rotation it obviously has a huge influence on the throwing arm mechanics and quantitatively speaking manifested through this velocity dependent torque so if you want to read more about the the induced power analysis or induced acceleration specifically in baseball, I cited a, a few articles here and I'm also up, will put links up on my YouTube page. If you're viewing this video, just go to the info or comments section and you'll have links to uh, a study that I did a, um, you know, a couple years ago. This was Gordy Aldering, so it was published just recently, as well as a couple studies out of Japan. Thank you.